You're looking at a functional plasma wand, and it doesn't produce your run-of-the-mill plasma. It produces a very specific type called cold plasma, which if you're wondering if that's actually cold, it is, but that's not the most remarkable thing about it. Imagine a device that can spot sterilize a wound and speed up healing. It's straight up futuristic. Well, the research shows that's where cold plasmas or non-thermal plasmas come in. It offers an exotic solution for the everyday problem of cleanliness. So I've built a cold plasma wand and I think you'll be shocked by what it can do. Let's go. A quick prelude about normal plasmas versus cold plasmas. Both can be used to sterilize, but only one does so without incinerating the surface it touches. Plasma is the fourth state of matter, composed of a soup of ionized gas atoms and electrons. In most cases, plasma will be in thermal equilibrium, meaning the free electrons in the soup are at approximately the same temperature as the atoms they came off of. Also in most cases, open air plasma will be at thousands of degrees, which not to be a Johnny Rain Cloud isn't always a good thing. Cold plasmas, though, are totally different, and they aren't in thermal equilibrium. While the electrons in these plasmas are at thousands of degrees Celsius, the atoms are at a much lower temperature, and this lowers the average temperature of the plasma to a point that it's practically touchable, while still maintaining an ability to sterilize. It's super dope. Cold plasma requires only a few things. A high-voltage, high-frequency power source. I use my pancake slayer, because it's pretty. Glass pipette. Wire. Some rubber tubing. Extra skin to replace what you'll definitely burn off. And a supply of helium gas, which... Whew. You can get for about 35 bucks at a party store. The goal is to ionize helium atoms in a way that they don't really have time to heat up, and then go ahead and direct that ionized gas to a specific point. To accomplish this, an electrode is generally placed inside of a tube of some sort, and a gas line attached. When helium flows through it, if that electrode is at high enough voltage and frequency, it'll ionize the helium inside the tube, and if the helium flows at just the right rate, the ionized gas can exit the tube before it warms up, while maintaining an ionized state. And a couple other educators have taken a stab at creating cold plasma, namely James from the Action Lab and Thought Emporium, but <laughs> considering my channel has the word plasma in it, I will not be beaten! So I set to work building a cold plasma wand! Mostly just using the supplies that I have on hand. Plasma wand, that sounds like a LARPing thing. My first attempt involved just stabbing the tube over the top of the coil. With the helium flowing and the coil turned on, ionized gas was coming out. <gasps> oh. Unfortunately, the gas was able to form direct arcs to my skin, which really wasn't comfortable, and I burned myself a few times. I tried adding distance between the air and the electrode, which I hoped would reduce the arcing. It actually overperformed and reduced everything. No, nothing there. My second setup used the 12 gauge needle attached to the end of the helium line. The electrode was stabbed through the side of the tubing like before, but this time the metal needle allowed for a nozzle to be much further away from the solid state coil. With power and helium flowing, all, oh, yeah, it lit up. Though this produced corona and ionized gas, it really wasn't cold plasma. The gas was too bright and my finger was getting really hot, so a step in the right direction I guess? Finally, I gave glass pipettes a try. They offered the perfect chamber to place an electrode down and an airtight connection for the helium tube at the back. It took a few tweaks, but this setup showed promise. The nozzle was focusing ionized helium into a point and it was touchable, it was cold to the touch. In the dark, it looked epic. I added a ground electrode just to try and increase the dielectric barrier discharge, but it totally ruined the output, so no ground. The last design actually was working, but it was built super shoddy and it was practically falling apart. So I wanted to give it a makeover and give it a dash of acrylic. As you can see, the casing is an acrylic tube which holds a glass pipette centered down the middle. Running down the pipette is an electrode which stops about 12 millimeters from the nozzle and the top has connections for both the high voltage and the helium gas. Around the tube are these insulating spacers which are supposed to reduce capacitive coupling to your hand and they kind of work. It's fed gas from a large helium tank and electricity from that Slayer coil, producing about 5,000 volts AC. This setup is classified as a microjet and produces cold plasma for a specific reason. First, helium gas is more electrically and thermally conductive than open air. For example, I can disconnect the power to the wand and keep the gas tube attached. With the Slayer turned on and the gas flowing, the helium will still ionize, just being within proximity to the coil. Second, ions form at the speed of light, but heating up ionized gas does take more time. So, with the helium flowing, the ionized atoms never really get the chance to heat up. 
and even if they do, that heat immediately dissipates away. So out comes cold plasma, which is confined to the flow of helium. It's incredibly beautiful. Ideally, the power source would be on board, but this is just a prototype. Mm, should I build another wand with an onboard power source? Well, that's what the comments are for. So if the wand creates cold plasma, it should be able to sterilize surfaces without burning them. To test this, I'll be using nine bacterial growth plates. Each plate is fully inoculated with bacteria, which I collected from my grimy hands. No one will shake hands with me after this. The first group is a control, and well, there's no treatment. The second group is treated with open air hot plasma. Oh look, it's vaporizing the surface. Big surprise. The last triplicate is treated with cold plasma. This is the little flame that could. I didn't want to waste a ton of helium, so I just exposed the middle of each plate to the plasma. These plates were then left to grow unassisted for a week while I watched some damn horror. I tend to keep my studio at 78 degrees because I'm a savage, which is warm enough for the plates. One week later. All right, it's been about a week. The results are super clear, but I have to admit, oh, they're visually underwhelming because there wasn't a tremendous amount of bacterial growth on any of the triplicates to begin with. But there is a stark difference, and I think using the right lighting techniques, I'll be able to highlight that difference between the triplicates. This is the first control. There's bacterial growth evenly across the entire plate, a couple larger colonies popping up, but the whole thing's been inoculated. Same story for the second control plate and the third control plate, though it's got some pretty large growth colonies there. Moving over to the hot plasma, yeah, totally different story here. This is completely devoid of life, but we also kind of damaged the surface in the process. And here's the second hot plasma plate, third plate. You'll notice none of them had growth on it, but they all were damaged. This is the cold plasma treatment. I circled the area I treated, and you'll notice, compared to here and here, there's no bacterial growth. There's growth outside of that, but not inside the circle. Same thing for the second plate. There is growth outside of that circle, but in the treatment area, absolutely no bacterial growth. And this guy was kind of a bit of a surprise. I don't really know what happened there, but you'll notice the same treatment area has virtually no growth inside of it, while outside there is growth present. So small sample size, yes, but the results are pretty indicative. Cold plasma is able to sterilize the surface without burning it. So if it's not because of incinerating heat, what does it? On the molecular level, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and even prions are terrified of oxidation. The helium I used contains 20% oxygen, which, when ionized, readily oxidizes the proteins in their cell walls and destroys that DNA. In fact, the consensus among studies indicates the formation of reactive oxygen species and or reactive nitrogen species is the main feature of cold plasma that contributes to inactivation. And it's this ability to sterilize is what lends itself towards wound healing because it's medically established that a sterile wound is just going to heal better. And I'm not encouraging you to go out and use cold plasma to heal a wound. I encourage you to do your own research, but I think this holds a lot of potential. The European Space Agency tends to agree as well, and they believe it has strong healing properties. And since 2018, plasma wands have actually been utilized in hospitals. Thanks a ton for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Did this blow your mind as much as it blew mine? And a massive thank you to all the patrons who continue to see value in my work. You stay classy.